Hello my friends, thank you for coming today. Today I'm going to review the Rock Island Armory TAC Ultra HC threaded, chambered in 10 millimeter. This is almost a perfect pistol. There's a few things I don't like about it, but I'm going to share with you the five things I like and the five things I hate about this pistol. First, I'm going to provide you with a quick overview of this pistol. Then, I'm going to tell you the five things I like, the five things I hate, and then we're going to go shoot it. So let's get started. This is the Rock Island Armory TAC Ultra HC Threaded, which was released to the market in 2018 and is designed for recreational shooting, hunting, and personal protection. It has a 5-inch barrel, an overall length of 8.75 inches, weighs 46.8 ounces, has a 6-pound trigger pull, and a magazine capacity of 16 rounds. It comes with a low-profile adjustable rear sight and a high-visibility fiber-optic front sight. It is weird that Rock Island Armory put low-profile sights on a pistol that has a threaded barrel because if you put a suppressor on it, the sights are not tall enough for aiming over the suppressor. The MSRP is $899. This is the heaviest and least expensive high capacity 10mm 1911 pistol in my collection and I feel that it is the best value 2011 pistol available. The first thing I love about this 10mm pistol is the magazine holds 16 rounds of 10mm. In a 1911 style gun, that's crazy. For anybody that doesn't know, a 2011 is a 1911 that has a double stacked magazine, therefore is high capacity. 16 rounds is uh, twice what the average 10 millimeter 1911 will hold. So that's impressive. So I can keep shooting this when others have to reload. Love that. The second thing I love about this pistol is it's got this threaded barrel. So I can put my suppressor on it. This is my only 1911 style gun that has a threaded barrel on it. So therefore the only 1911 style gun that I can use a suppressor on. It's just so much cooler to shoot with a suppressor than, than not. At least I think so. The third thing I love about this pistol is these G10 grips. These are high quality grips. They feel comfortable in the hands and they just have a good look and feel. They're not as grippy as some of my other grips, but um, it still feels nice in the hand. And so when manufacturers put on G10 grips instead of cheap plastic grips, that's what I like. The fourth thing I like is the trigger. Since this is a 1911 slash 2011 pistol, the trigger, you got a little bit of take up and then you got that wall, you apply about five pounds of pressure and it's a clean break and your hammer fires. A nice clean breaking trigger like that makes it easier to be accurate, at least for me. I know others who say the same thing. The fifth thing I love about this pistol is it is an all metal pistol. This is solid. It doesn't feel like a cheap plasticky Glock or any of those other striker fired pistols that have that cheap feel about it. This feels solid. If you need to, considering its weight and solidness, it would work great for pistol whipping. If you run out of bullets and you need to pistol whip your attacker, you can do that with this. Those are the five things I love. Now I'm gonna share with you the five things I hate about this pistol. So the first thing I hate about this pistol are these sights, they're too low. So I like it's fiber optic, I like you can adjust it, but they need to be raised because as soon as I put on a suppressor, I can no longer aim this gun accurately. I have to just look at the top of the suppressor and that's not very accurate. If, um, if these are raised a little bit, to go over the suppressor, that would be primo. The second thing I hate about this pistol is there is no optics mount right here. Iron sights are good for people who have good vision. I just happen to not have good vision up close. So iron sights are blurry. They blur in with the background. It, not so much with this fiber optic, but it's not as easy as having a red dot for me. Having a red dot, it makes it easier for me with my poor eyesight to hit the target every time. The third thing I hate about this pistol is how often I get failures to feed. So sometimes I'll get a couple failures to feed in a single magazine. I don't like that. You know what, I even took this to my gunsmith and he polished it up and tried his best to make it so it'll feed better. It feeds better since I took it to him, but I still have problems. I don't know if it has a break-in period like some of the other guns that Rock Island Armory puts out, but yeah. Not working so well for me. That's why I could never use this as a defensive pistol because I need my defensive pistols to work 100% of the time 
every time and this doesn't do that so the fourth thing i hate about this pistol is that its takedown is a little bit challenging uh you first start out taking it down like a regular 1911 you put this all the way you put the slide all the way back here's where it's different you got to put a little paper clip thing and a hole that's on the guide rod and then once you do that then you can pop out the slide release and your slide comes off problem is that whole part where you have to put the paper clip in the pin and then taking the guide rod out and all that it's not that bad once you do it a few times it's not nearly as simple as like a glock breakdown so when it's this complicated i don't like it i think it's this complicated because of the bull barrel because some of my other pistols with bull barrels are complicated like this the fifth thing i hate about this pistol is considering its weight and size look at how thick that grip is right there that's a that's a fat old grip so weight and size it's not very concealable for concealability you want small you want thin you want light that's exactly the opposite of what you get with this so yeah uh not something i'd be able to carry around with me if i'm if i'm trying to conceal i mean i guess i could if i was wearing something big but for the most part gotta leave this bad boy at home so those are the five things i love five things i hate about this rock island armory 10 millimeter pistol if you like this video so far would you go ahead and please click that like button and if you haven't subscribed yet would you go ahead and subscribe to this channel it shows your support for the second amendment and it helps out the channel too so appreciate that also i've got well over 100 really awesome videos in my library go ahead and check them out binge watch them enjoy them it'll help out the channel and it'll entertain you so go ahead and do that now let's head out to the range I'd like to share with you a product that has literally worked miracles for me. I've been lifting quite a bit most of my life and uh, I always seem to hit this plateau of about 220 pounds on the bench press. And I ended up making a friend at the gym who's a doctor of Chinese medicine. You know, over the years he, he came up with this formula uh, for a pre-workout that uh, literally uh, blows you past all your plateaus. It's a proof for the NFL. Navy SEALs operators use it. Check it out. I'm going to have the link in the description. You go there, uh, use the code uh, Cult of Arms, and you'll get 25% off this product. While taking this product, I've been able to blow through all of my plateaus, and I ended up getting a max bench of 455 pounds. I would never be able to do this without the world's greatest pre-workout. I'm not even a serious weightlifter. I'm just a casual weightlifter taking this pre-workout. And over the years, like I said, I've been able to blow past my plateaus and get phenomenal results. Like I said, 450 pound bench press. I can do 10 curls of uh, 135 pounds, which blows me away. I didn't know that that was even possible. If you lift weights at all, you need to try this product. It's gonna up your game significantly. Give it a shot, try it for a month, see how you do. It's cool being able to lift more than anybody else in the gym. If you're stuck in a plateau and you can't make any more gains, or if you just wanna increase the rate at which you make gains, give this pre-workout a try company's clear path the product is muscle you'll get 25 percent off if you use a discount code cult of arms all one word on um, put it down in the description so you can see it there check it out buy it if you use it as directed you're gonna fall in love okay guys i'm here out at a different range today we got the rock island armory 2011 with a suppressor on it we've got some water targets set up i'm gonna actually stand a little bit closer this time since uh, these iron sights are not raised, so I can't really aim very well because the suppressor's in the way. So I gotta get a little bit closer. So forgive me for that this time, appreciate it. Let's go ahead and shoot this bad boy.
Well, I think I did all right. Even up close, I missed a couple times, but again, you know, if you take a look, the sight sits below the suppressor, so it's really hard to aim, but, but we still end up getting them. Had to get closer to be able to get on target, but it worked. Um, this gun has so much potential, especially with the suppressor on, it's like shooting a tank. I mean, this thing is heavy as a tank. This would be super awesome to use for pistol whipping. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up some metal targets. Uh, give me a second and we'll go again. Okay, so I got some metal targets set up. We're gonna go ahead and shoot them and uh, see how we do. Okay, my friends, got a rock set up. I'm gonna go ahead and blast it a whole bunch of times. See how 10 millimeter does against this block. Wish me luck. I did have my gunsmith do some work on this to make it less likely to have a failure to feed. And there is improvement. I have less instances of failures to feed, but you just saw that one magazine, two failures to feed. That's why I don't like Rock Island Armory. This is my second Rock Island Armory pistol. The other one was horrible, it was a 22 Magnum, had a lot of failure to feed issues. You know, except for the issues of failure to feed, I love shooting this gun, it's a blast to shoot. Holds a lot of rounds, you know. It's a double stacked magazine, so it holds a decent amount of rounds. Um, threaded barrel, so I can shoot suppressed, you know, 1911 style, 2011 style. So, you know, you get that generally sweet trigger pull. Not something I would use for self-defense because of the failure to feed issue, uh, but you know, it's a fun plinking gun. If you can get your gunsmith to make it so that it won't, won't have failure to feed issues or if you can find the right ammo that works through this uh, without fear, failure to feed issues then maybe this would be a good self-defense gun although it is it's built like a tank i hope you guys like this video i hope you guys would like to watching me shoot this gun and reviewing it if you haven't already go ahead and click that like button go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you value the second amendment also i have a whole ton of other videos where i'm shooting and reviewing guns Go check it out. I promise you there's a lot of good stuff in there for you to watch. Again, thank you for coming out with me. Um, appreciate it. Love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.